Hey everybody, this is a warning. Um, the following video will contain quite a bit of uh, 45 RPM content. Thank you. I thought it would be important to throw out that disclaimer. There's been um, quite a bit of controversy lately <laughs> in the vinyl community regarding 45 RPM pressings. You know, they take a little more effort. Um, you have to get out of your chair and flip the record um, more often than on a 33 and a third RPM. Now today, I'm going to take things a little bit to the extreme. Um, I'm going to talk about 12 inch singles and a lot of the 10 singles I'm going to talk about uh, are issued out of the UK or out of Europe. And if you know, you know, 45 RPM 12 inch singles are absolutely amazing. If you are a lover of earth shaking bass, incredible stereo imaging, sound stages to die for, and just the best fidelity and sound quality that you could get for maybe some of your most famous, your most favorite songs that you love, love, love. I have been always on the lookout when I go to record shows or shops. I'm looking for those post-punk new wave 12 inch singles. These might have been promotional copies that were given out to radio stations, advanced copies of an album coming up, uh, DJs. Uh, I have a few extended mix uh, variations of these singles. They're not always my favorite. They're kind of a novelty item. But I really, really love when you can get one or two of the best songs on the album. I know that's subjective. Everybody has their own favorites, but typically if they're going to put it down on a single-sided 45 RPM on one side, in all its glory, the single was noteworthy or important. And, and believe me, these things really make a statement. Now, last weekend, I made uh, a pretty serious upgrade to my sound system. I've got some new speakers that you may have uh, seen on my Instagram account. Um, they're over, one's over there in the corner, uh, one's over my shoulder there. Um, I'm not going to cover those speakers today. I'm saving that for probably my next video, but this was a perfect opportunity for me to take out 10 of my favorite 12 inch singles, give them a listen. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, I have been auditioning all kinds of, and genres of music over the past weekend, uh, over the past two days really. I, I just got the speakers on Saturday and today is Monday. I'm already talking too much about the speakers. I'm going to I'm going to drop that subject. We're going to uh we're going to save that for the next video. Okay, this first 12-inch is a really historical document of a time and a place. And the time was when Joy Division were moving into their next phase called New Order. Um they had just lost Ian Curtis and the rest of the band moving forward that that fateful summer they actually went back and re-recorded two songs that were the last two songs I think I'm right here I might not be wrong I think these were the last two songs that uh, they recorded with with Ian Curtis and then they went back and, and um, they did a couple versions of Ceremony. And then the other song, of course, is In a Lonely Place. This is a really gorgeous, deep green, original pressing, UK. Um, the label is the same color as the, uh, as the cover. 
Um, this is a near mint example. Uh, a Ceremony has got to be one of my favorite songs of all time. Just the incredible emotion tied into that song, and if you know the backstory, even more so. Um, it's an amazing song. It is a thrilling, primal listen, and uh, this is the best format, in my opinion, that you're going to hear that song, Ceremony. Um, you can go out and get, of course, uh, Substance, which is the 1987 compilation. Uh, in fact, there's going to be a reissue that I've seen that's coming um, either next month or in November. Um, I do have an original uh, U.S. pressing, specialty pressing, and it is a great sounding record with all those great songs, but Ceremony is near and dear to my heart. Okay, next up, uh, and by the way, these are in no real order. Um, I've just kind of put these together quickly. Um, what we have here is the what I believe is the third single ever released by the Smiths. This is interesting because it has uh, no credit on that cover photograph, which is uh, Terrence Stamp, actually. That's a film still. And uh, this was eventually withdrawn, and I believe Morrissey had to kind of reapproximate that photo. Um, and then eventually they did go back and get permission. Um, the later pressings and later issues of this 12 inch do have the Smiths up here. Uh, and then this original Terrence Stamp photograph returned. Uh, this of course is what different does it make that is, uh, on rough trade. I love that pale color of that label uh, that you see on many different um, Smiths singles and, and actually full-length albums as well. Um, great song. This thing sounds absolutely amazing. It is also uh, on 45 RPM. And let's see what is on side B, which I rarely listen to. I've got two tracks on side B. You can see those there. Um, I recently found this, and I think I paid $11 for it. This is basically unplayed, and it's a Holland pressing, and it just sounds simply amazing on 45 RPM. Um, ear candy to the max. Next up is the 1984 UK 12-inch for... Don't Go Back to Rockville from, of course, Reckoning. Um, you know, here's another thing to love about these 12-inch uh, singles. You get alternative and interesting artwork that is totally different than the, the main artwork that is on um, the full-length albums. And a really cool picture of the band circa 1984. Of course, this was on... Uh, IRS and Rockville is one of my favorite REM songs. Pure pleasure when listening to Peter Buck's uh, Rickenbacker and that jangle pop. Uh, it's it's just amazing. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of some more adjectives I could throw in there, but I'm not, I don't want to overdo this. An incredible listening experience, again, on uh, 45 RPM. This is New Order's Thieves Like Us, an incredible uh, cover design by the great Peter Seville. Uh, this is another amazing New Order song, 1987. It was a non-album release on Factory. Uh, 45 RPM, it sounds simply... Delicious. Here's one that's fairly topical and in the news currently. Talking Heads from Stop Making Sense, the incredible newly released concert film. Um, we have Slippery People and what is the flip side? Uh, 
The flip side is Naive Melody, one of my favorite Talking Heads songs. Of course, Naive Melody is from uh, Speaking in Tongues, an amazing Talking Heads album. And uh, this appears to be a still from uh, Stop Making Sense as the cover art. Um, 45 RPM, uh, another amazing roller coaster of a ride. This sounds like you're in the room, especially with these newly acquired speakers that I have that I'm going to talk about soon. <laughs> um, a great, great, great listen on 45 RPM. Hey, this is a really cool one, and I've only seen this one time when I purchased it at a show. I've never seen it out in the wild again. Robin Hitchcock's 12-inch of uh, Balloon Man from, of course, uh, Globe of Frogs. Great, great, great record. Of course, Peter Buck from R.E.M. is also on that record. And we got a very cool uh, e &M put this out. Uh, it is a 12-inch. It's on 33 and a third, by the way. Uh, and we get this translucent, uh, very cool green color, um, probably having to do with frogs, I, I'm thinking. Uh, great record, um, you know, uh, Balloon Man with that bouncing bass line, um, really kind of uh, elevated Robin Hitchcock's um, awareness out there. I think he... He was a regular person on, um, what was it, 120 Minutes on MTV. You, you would see him quite often there. And um, The Egyptians was a very cool iteration and kind of point in time for Robin Hitchcock. So far, everything that I've shown has been between the years of 1980, 81, moving forward. I think this is the the um, most recent 12-inch um, that I have, of course, it is the Cure. Uh, side A is Pictures of You, and then we get a live version of uh, Fascination Street. Um, looking, reading the back here, the notes. Recorded live at Wembley, July 1989. Uh, produced by the Cure. This is, um, of course, from Disintegration. Um, and Pictures of You is an, an extended remix. Uh, it's a very cool listen, and um, I can't remember if this is 45 or 33. 33 RPM. Um, love the Cure. Finally had a chance to see them this summer. It was an amazing nearly three-hour show. Um, Robert Smith... Uh, his voice is held up so well. Uh, I'm not sure about the hair <laughs> and the smeared makeup at this point in time. Um, you, might, you might want to consider uh, a little bit of a refresh to his look. But I love, love, love Robert Smith and the Cure. And this is, uh, this is fun to have in the collection. Next up is a remixed version of Don't Go. A crazy remix, by the way. Uh, this is something definitely built for the dance floor in whatever year this thing came out, uh, 83, 84 maybe. Uh, this is a German pressing, and it was on that mute label. Uh, you know, we've got uh, Vince Clark and Allison Moyer on this. Uh, the band at that point in time was known as Yazoo. It was shortened to Yaz uh, for the American audience um, and other folks, I guess. Uh, there's the back cover. This is a, a bit of a roller coaster ride of a listen, but very nice to have. And uh, 45 RPM as well. Sound quality is just amazing. Okay, next up I've got a 1986... Uh, this is uh, Husker Du, Don't Want to Know If You Are Lonely. Uh, this includes uh, a live, incredible cover version of Helter Skelter. Helter Skelter was recorded live at First Avenue in Minneapolis, that place where if you go there, you will see Husker Du's name in the, uh, you know, it's very cool to have all the different band names that have played uh, First Avenue or 7th Street Entry. Uh, 
This was off of the forthcoming major label debut for Husker Du, Candy Apple Grey in 1986. Uh, Don't Want to Know If You're Lonely is a great Grant Hart song. And uh, it was on the Warner's label. This was called a specially priced three-cut maxi single. Uh, there's a Mold song, All Work and No Play, on side B. And it is also on 45 RPM. You know, Husker Du's sound was very primitive in the early days. It got a little bit better as far as sound quality on those original records when they went over to Warner Brothers. Um, this is a really good sounding single and happy to have it. Okay, last but not least, I just found this, I don't know, about a year ago. And the first song is This World Over. This is XTC. Uh, the second song is Blue Overall on side two. This is 45 RPM. This is one of the best sounding pieces of wax in my collection right now. It's incredible. And listening to This World Over, it really made me, there's the back cover, it really made me reassess uh, The Big Express, that album from XTC. It is woefully underrated, overlooked. You need to hear that if you haven't heard The Big Express lately. Uh, it's pretty easy to find original pressings. I actually happen to have that die-cut round uh, UK uh, version of it, which sounds amazing as well. As I was saying, this was mastered at the townhouse. My battery ran out on my other camera, and I'm, I'm going to just finish this up with my phone. Uh, definitely check this thing out. It is an amazing song from, like I said, an overlooked album. That is going to be it for today. Um... I will be back soon with this uh, the video that I'm promising. I'm going to talk about my new speakers in my setup. Really, really happy. That's your um, that's your uh, teaser for that. But thanks for watching again today. I hope you liked this selection of um, I think nine out of ten of these were 45 RPM. Uh, they are really fun to have in the collection and and give them a spin occasionally especially if you're looking to get your hair blown back with incredible sound quality. Take care, everybody.